Livingston is a small but vibrant town in the southern province of Zambia. It is the home to the Mosuotunya Falls, also known as Victoria Falls. Lying 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles to the north of the Zambezi River, Livingston is the tourism center for Zambia. With a population of approximately 135,000, Livingston is known for its nightlife as well as its national game parks. The area enjoys three distinct seasons. The wet warm season from November to April. The cool dry season of temperatures 16 to 27 degrees Celsius from May to August and the hot dry season from September to October of temperatures 27 to 32 degrees Celsius. The Mosi Otunya Falls area has a subtropical hot and arid climate with a marked seasonal variation. Located on either side of the Zambeza River in southern Zambia and northwestern Zimbabwe, the Mosi Otunya National Park follows the left bank between the Sindo River and the Songwe Gorge, bounded on the north by the Dambra Forest Reserve and the town of Livingston. <laughs> Black and I'm proud and I am sorry. My dear, I'm wearing sorry, correct. True story. H Town Hustler, Avenue's Queen. Cash rules everything around me. Okay guys, as you can see these are the elephants found in the elephant corridor as it's known. So this is the road between Victoria Falls and the town of Livingston. On the right bag. Victoria Falls National Park is bounded by the river from 6 kilometers above to 12 kilometers below the falls and by the town of Victoria Falls on the west. A river and strip of the Zambezi National Park extending 9 kilometers west along the right bank of the Zambezi and islands in the river are all within the park as far as Palm and Kalahari Islands. It's raining over here because I'm at the falls, baby. Yeah, you know what's up. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys in, show you more of what's happening back here. But I think you guys can see back here, everybody's so happy that the falls is open again. Jointly owned by Zimbabwe and Zambia, the Mosi Otunya is a transboundary property which on December 15, 1989 was declared a World Heritage Site. In addition, the site has outstanding beauty attributed to the falls, the spray, the mist and the rainbow. The site has a large curtain of water of 1,708 meters giving it a special place in the world. The geology of the Mosi Otunya Falls area is a product of volcanic action that characterized much of southern Africa about 200 million years ago during the Karoo period. The lava flows produced during this period formed the basalt plate underlying the rocks. These basalts are subsequently overlain by a thin layer of arid and or marine sandstones and the red Kalahari sands. Chalcedony and surface limestones are also formed as isolated rocks or constituent minerals. Outpouring right here behind us. Okay, so let's take a look and see what's happening in here. In 1958, historic flows of 700,000 cubic meters per minute were recorded. Blackbird the Bantu Queen coming to you live from the Victoria Falls. 
actually known as Mosotunia but commercially known as Vic Falls and this is the biggest waterfall in the world so I'm gonna be speaking to the site manager Mr. John Zulu to get the logistics how they run this place to find out the history and the importance of Victoria Falls to our culture as not just Zambians and Zimbabweans but as Africans so behind me we have a craft market as you can see so this place isn't just about the natural habitat it's also about promoting entrepreneurship empowering the local community all the crafts that you see here nothing here is imported from the UK or from the States everything here is made by our very own African people so when you come to the Falls make sure you come with enough dollars ching ching baby so you can load up on some of this African bling as you can see over here there's bags there's kitchen items ornaments a whole lot of stuff but now let's get into our interview with mr. John Zulu and we can find out a bit more about the Falls and the months of November to December the Mosi Otunya Falls are at their lowest level with a mean flow of less than 20,000 cubic meters per minute. March to April is the peak season with water levels rising rapidly. At peak flood, water at the Mosi Otunya Falls flows 30 times its dry season volume, averaging 550,000 cubic meters per minute. Okay guys, I'm coming to you from the Victoria Falls, known originally as the Mosotunia Falls, and I'm joined by Mr. John Zulu. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Mr. Zulu, thank you very much for giving us your time. Today is quite a busy day at the Falls because of Corona. It was closed, now we're all coming. Um, but maybe you can just tell us a bit about yourself and your job here. How long have you been here? Okay, uh, my name is John Zulu. Yes. I've been working here for 14 years now. Okay. Um, I am an anthropologist. Okay. I specialize in um, cultural anthropology. Mm -hmm. I work in a natural, a natural setting. setup like this. One. Right. Uh, but uh, it's all, it all blends in because of the values that are embedded in this area yes, here. Yes, yes. Okay, so can you note some of the great experiences you've had working here or some celebrities you've met, really, you know, people who shocked you upon arrival? <laughs> um, uh, I think one of the best uh, uh, surprises or shocks that I've had is that of uh, uh, the President of the United States. Okay, who's uh, this, Obama? No. Trump? Uh, no. <laughs> I thought uh, Trump Bush, came here. George oh, George Bush, Bush came here? Exactly. Okay, yeah. okay. It was early in the morning, actually, was the first one to come here. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> that was that a surprise? Was I can imagine. I know Will Smith came here. Did you meet Will Smith? I did meet him. Yeah. Ah, he met Will Smith! <laughs> Not fair! Did he come with the wife and kids? He came with the entire family. <laughs> Miss Jada, I'm a big fan of Jada. Jada, you need to come to the falls again. Hit me up, girl, <laughs> so we can hook up. Okay, so my next line of questioning is about the cultural um, value of this place. You're an anthropologist, so you specialize in these type of things. Mukuni Village was the largest village in the area before Livingston was founded. The Mukuni Village is inhabited by the Balea people who originally came from the Roji culture in Zimbabwe. They were conquered by Chief Mukuni, who came from the Congo in the 18th century. Okay. So the Balea people intermarried with the Mukuni people. Yeah, exactly. So it's now a new breed of Exactly. People. So okay. instead of known as a Balea, it's mm -hmm. known as Lea. Okay. Okay. So it was spelled B-E-R-Y like that but now, but now it's, it's layer. a layer people of Mukuni okay. so after the intermarriages so that's how now they settled around this area and so they live around this area mainly because of its uh, economical issues you know and sustenance the, there's water lives, here exactly so yes. water fish farming exactly yes and also the the ecology itself right this area besides it being a natural site because UNESCO recognized this site as a world heritage site in 1989. Okay. Mainly for its uh, geological, geomorphological, and aesthetic beauties. Right. Okay. But so, what does this UNESCO uh, heritage site entail? It's protected by it's international exactly. law? Yes. Okay, okay. Meaning it has got these uh, outstanding universal values. Right. That you cannot find anywhere, anywhere else, else in, in the, the world. world. So, this it's is a unique feature. Very unique. Okay. And it's only to the Victoria Falls that it's uh, known that it's not known. is it the biggest waterfall in the world because I understand it's mm -hmm. the biggest in terms yes, of the widest the widest exactly. it's how long uh, so it's a uh, 1706 meters, meters wide so almost two kilometers exactly. wide yeah. and how high uh, the deepest point is uh, 110 meters 
Okay. So of that uh, 1,706 meters, 1,200 meters is on the Zambian side. Okay. And then 506 is on the Zimbabwean side. The Zimbabwean side. side. Because okay. this is a transboundary site, which right. is co-managed between the state parties of Zambia and Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe. Okay. So the majority of the force is in the Zambian it's side. The Zambian That's why side. when you're walking, walking, mm. it's a long mm. trip on the, exactly. on the Zambian side. Minimum, it can take you about three hours. Three hours. Can you imagine, guys? Three hours just walking through one place. That's how amazing this place is. Mm. So, in terms of the spiritual value towards our culture, so you've explained the historical yeah. value. In a previous conversation, you mentioned to me that there's some traditional ceremonies that happen here. Please, can you elaborate? Good. So, uh, besides it uh, being a source of uh, food yes. and uh, ecological uh, benefits, such as uh, fruits and uh, vegetables yes. uh, it's a highly spiritual site right. in the sense that the layer people themselves they have got a number of sacred sites here okay of which are uh, different times of the year they come and perform ceremonies or rites, rituals, rituals here. Okay. Uh, to appease their gods okay uh, some of them uh, there are many rituals that are performed to request for rainfall Yes. when they're about to go into the famine season. Farming season okay. uh, the other rituals are that of uh, asking their gods to give them good harvest, right. good hay for their cattle and other livestock. Okay. Others are for cleansing, yes. diseases. Okay. Others are for uh, when they want to pray for fertility mm -hmm. and cleansing. Uh, so we have got all these different sections of the forms that right. they have got these specific Speci functions. Exactly. Have you ever attended any of these ceremonies? Yes, <laughs> you am. have. Okay, so I need to come on the next one. Am I welcome or they, you have uh, to come by invite only? Uh, being a ceremony, they're, they're highly sacred. Yes. And so they are not... Uh, Open to the public exactly, in general. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Because they are, they are for the society, they are for this right. special community itself, for the people of Mukuni. So if I stay in Livingston, I don't count as the people of the community. Uh, unless by accident you find <laughs> I them. I find them. Exactly. Okay, now I need to make friends with people in Mukuni village. Exactly. That's the solution. <laughs> okay, so now speaking of this being a protected site, um, I'd like to find out in terms of animal life, this is within a national park. Mm -hmm. So what type of animals are found here? Wildlife, the big five, what's around here? Okay, uh, big five, uh, we've got the elephants. With the elephants, um, yes. They like uh, um, a lot of our trees here. We've got a lot of mopani and the baobab, they like a lot of the baobab. Okay. The bugs, they like eating it because of its juicy. Right. Uh, we've got the hippopotamus. Yes. Uh, they like coming out. I'm sure you've seen some of the footprints of the hippopotamus. Yes, somewhere. around, yes. Yeah. Uh, we've got the baboons themselves. A lot of baboons. Yeah, we've a got, lot. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, we've also the bush babies, they have, okay. we have them here. We've got the squirrels, mm -hmm. um, birds, those are some different of the, birds. We've got a number of, uh, we've got about 209. Uh, different species of, of birds. birds. Yeah. Okay, so 209 within this area. Just within this particular wow. area. Okay, that's great. The islands and gorges are of special interest in relation to the bird life. Among the 36 recorded species, 13 species use the area as a breeding ground and 16 are specially protected. The concern is, however, over the increasing disturbances of the Taita falcon and the black eagle breeding sites and the gorges. The islands and swamps are important refuge for the coppery-tailed kukau, lesser jacana, night herons, and pearls fishing owl. Thirteen species breed in the gorges, sixteen species are protected, and the rest are migratory birds. Okay, so what has the experience been for you like, um, what can I say, on a personal level? Is there something different about coming to work here than going to work in an office somewhere else? I'm sure there must be a it is. difference. Mm -hmm. It is, because, uh, like I mentioned, being a spiritual site, yes. uh, I've seen lots of people under the moon and the number of people from different religions. Yes. Uh, being the Hare Krishnas, they also come here. Also, oh, Hare Krishnas come here. Yeah, they also come here. Right. The so, do they get water from here and take it? Not really. Okay. They just Not come really. and do their thing. Yes, and so it's one of that experiences that I've come you to really it. benefit myself mm -hmm. because there's there's been that growth right. when I personally have been able to engage mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. You okay. feel that energy exactly. It enters your life exactly. personally. Yeah. I can imagine because even for me, every time I come here, I can feel there's a, a spiritual shift. Mm -hmm. There's something in the air around this yeah. place. Yeah. Definitely something. Four main vegetation types are observed in the Mosquitunia. 
which are Mopane, mixed scrubland, riparian, and swamp vegetation types. A closer analysis of these woodlands reveals six main vegetation types, which are the riparian forest, Kalahari woodland, Mopane mixed scrub vegetation, Mukusi woodland, and Mombo woodland. Have you seen a lot of African Americans come to the falls and have you, are there locals who stay here who are from the states? I've had one experience, a lot of them come, but right. there's one particular experience, I'll not mention the name of a friend of mine from the United States of America. Mm -hmm. When he came here, he felt like not flying back home <laughs> to the States. Yeah. Because he felt this was his home. This yeah. was where he originated from. Came from, yes. Because of the peace around yes. here. Yes. And everybody was smiling and laughing and wanting to talk to and talk. engage with him. Right. And so, this is one thing again about the falls because that's why they also declared it as an international peace park. Oh, it's a peace park? Yes, it's, okay. it is a peace park. It was okay. declared as a peace park in, in 2005. Okay. Reason being that it draws people from every corner of the world, mm -hmm. different ethnicities, belief systems. Mm -hmm. But once everybody comes here, there's, there's, there's no boundary. Right. Everybody is a brother, everybody is a, a sister, sister and we're all smiling and yes. enjoying this nature. Enjoying it, yes. Okay, that's great. Actually, I didn't know it's a peace park. I'm going to research if you guys know what peace parks are. I'm going to go and Google that. Um, but I think my final question um, is, now the original name is Mosotunia. Can you tell us about the history of the name and uh, the relevance that it still has today? Do people still refer to the falls as Mosotunia or has the name Victoria Falls completely taken over? Okay, so uh, according to the UNESCO um, original name that we've put on the UNESCO uh, World Heritage Map itself, it's known as Musio Tunya, okay. which means the smoke that thunders. Okay, so according to UNESCO, this is not registered as Victoria Falls, it's Musio Tunya. On the Zambian side. On the Zambian side, okay. So if you are to look at it, it's Musio Tunya stroke, Victoria Falls. Right. So on the Zimbabwean side, it's Victoria Falls. No but stroke Mosotunya on the no. same side. It's just Victoria Falls. No, the full name is Musiotunya stroke, stroke Victoria, Victoria Falls. Falls. Okay. On the Zambian side, it's Musiotunya. On okay. that side, it's Victoria, Victoria Falls. Falls. Exactly. Okay, I understand. So, but different tribes in Zambia call it different names. Mm -hmm. Like the people of Mopuni, they call it Shunguna I've also heard exactly. that. It means the same thing. It smoke means that the thunders. smoke that thunders. Right. Okay, the Bembas in the northern part of Zambia, they call it uh, Shungumufu. Guys, if you didn't know, the Victoria Falls is officially called Monsieur Tunya. You've heard it from the man himself. Um, some people refer to it as Vic Falls, but the original name is applicable on the Zambian side. On the Zimbabwean side, it's still got the Vic Falls in it. But um, a lot of people are actually calling for both sides to call it Monsieur Tunya because we're in a stage where we're trying to reclaim our identity, so names are so important. The Monsieur Tunya, or the smog that thunders, is significant worldwide for its unique geological and geo morphologic features and the active land formation processes which are of outstanding universal values. The War Memorial, it's a monument that was mounted here in the falls to commemorate all the soldiers that fought in the first and second world, world war. world and one and two, we saw that, yes. Exactly, who are mainly from Europe. Right, there's no but African names on that list no, I noticed. it's written there to say, they, plus, uh, there's a certain name that the, the code does, mm -hmm. where they're saying their memorial is not placed here, but somewhere else. Somewhere else where? Asilitari. Have you seen it? Yes, it's somewhere, in, uh, uh, somewhere around town. Okay, okay. So, you see, monuments and landscapes, mm -hmm. they, they are interrelated. Yes. Because we need to ask ourselves a question, why do they prefer to put their monument here to commemorate the soldiers that fought in the First and Second World War, mm -hmm. alongside this great, mighty, Mighty, and a spiritually sacred exactly. place. Yes. Okay. So, it brings again questions more or less like the Matopo Hills exactly. and Sesu John Rhodes. His bones are still at the Which are in a sacred site again, yes. but their foot died. Right. So those are questions that uh, we're also trying to still look into right. and see really 
Is it about the interpretation of history or mm-hmm. reinterpretation of monuments? Yes. So those are issues that come into into the play. Into play. Okay. Uh, but however, it's a, it's a, it's something that we're waiting that we're, on. Okay. I was also shocked to find that there's a tribute to white soldiers, but what? I know there were black soldiers a who also fought soldiers. in World War One, World War Two. Exactly. So it was kind of shocking that that is still there. So it's interesting you've raised that, and so you would be int- you would be interested to see this memorial come down if possible. Precisely. Okay. Uh, because uh, it's not talking about us, and then mm-hmm. this place also being a spiritual site, especially for the indigenous yes. people. Now to have that memorial then here is contradictory. Exactly. It's like a shrine in a way. Okay. I feel this like place is a shrine. this place is a shrine. So when exactly. you allow someone else to build a memorial to other dead people, you're now mixing values. And you know, yeah. it's something that uh, all over Africa, uh, this issue, these debates about monuments and landscape. Yeah. Yes. You know, right it's, now it's, 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 it's hot. hot. It's a hot topic because a lot of uh, Cecil John Rhodes's monuments have been pulled down exactly. in South Africa. They pulled down. So, yeah. okay, even, in Zimbabwe. even in Zimbabwe they've yeah. pulled down. So now here in Zambia, we need to see what will be happening. Exactly. The challenge that we have is that our way of writing and the recording historical events was considered primitive. Yes. Okay. And so we only come to know about our past and our history when we knew how to write. Right. Oral yeah. tradition has never been considered legitimate. No, it was primitive. Right. And so even the way that we were able to broadcast our cultural values for anything was considered primitive. Yes. Not until it was It was now written. written. So Bushman's cave paintings are considered primitive. Exactly. Even though it's documented. And, and, and if you were to also look here at the Victoria Falls, mm-hmm. it's all about the tangible. Right. Heritage, yes. values, yes. Okay, what they're able to see, but the unseen, which is the intangible, was Doesn't not considered. Count. Precisely, mm-hmm. that is why this was considered as a natural site and not mm-hmm. a cultural site. Right, because there's no evidence of the cultural heritage. Precisely, because we were the way we communicated mm-hmm. and the way we still communicate, mm-hmm. it was intangible. And it's different to how Westerners communicate. And so they came and brought what they felt should be the proper. And that is how this was now a natural site. Right, I understand you. To me, really, if you were to ask me, this is a cultural site. It is a cultural site, definitely. Precisely. Yes. According to their standards. Exactly. But the cultural values themselves are all in, they're they're intangible. You can't see, you you can just see, and you you can just hear about them. Right. And feel them. Like yes. you mentioned, you said when you came here, you felt a presence. Yes, that's, that's the tangibles. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the debate continues where the David Livingston statue should be here. You have raised va- valid points that he was a important part of stopping the slavery. But mm. our own heroes, we were not documenting no. accordingly. So now mm. people can say, how do we know? Whereas Precisely. David Livingston's history is documented. That's the argument, yeah. I guess, that they can yeah. stand on. Yeah, because okay. uh, chief, uh, one of uh, the greatest chiefs of Mukuni, mm-hmm. the first chief Mukuni actually, was buried mm-hmm. on uh, Siloka Island. Okay. okay. And uh, the island... You know, it's it's all these issues about right. that's one of the islands the within powers, exactly the Zambezi River. Exactly. Okay, guys, if you didn't know, there's islands within the Zambezi River. Yeah, yeah. just on the <laughs> leap of the falls. Right. And so, these names, most of them, they still hold these, you know, uh, colonial names like Princess Island. So yes, on and yes. So, on and so, so things on. like that can be reviewed, I think, as they time goes. Be. They should be. They must be. They reviewed. must be. But I think uh, what is lacking is we have too much relaxed mm-hmm. and there's no a full voice that is able to bring to these push issues this agenda. To right. To say, what about this? Then let's yes. change it. Okay, Mr. Zulu, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know you're busy, but my last parting uh, question, I said the last one was the last one, but one last one. Coronavirus mm. and tourism in Livingston, tourism at the Falls. Uh, we've just adjusted our operational times. Right. And uh, also our operational structure as manpower, we've adjusted it. Okay. Interestingly, again, uh, people from all over Zambia, they strongly believe mm-hmm. that the spray or the mist that falls from the falls has yes. power to heal. Yes, these are holy waters. Precisely, so, yes. and so most of them would prefer to walk through.
the knife edge bridge, I'm yes. sure you have, yes. where you have the showers. The showers coming down. And then on uh, you. they believe they have got the power to cleanse you of any infect infirmity or, any or spiritual diseases, witchcraft, yes. including, including COVID itself. Even COVID. Also, exactly. Okay. So that is why people prefer to come here yes. and you know have an encounter with the water. With the water. Here. Okay, exactly. I didn't know that. But so, however, right. we are cautious. Yes. Uh, everybody has to wear masks. Mask. There's still those and precautions. Then, exactly. And I saw this hand wash. Uh, stations all over the place. The mass of Atunya, or the smoke that thunders, is significant worldwide for its unique geological and geomorphologic features and the active land formation processes which are of outstanding universal values. Okay, Mr. Zulu, this has been a great conversation. I look forward to more. You heard it from Mr. Zulu yourself. This is the Mosi Otunya Falls. Mosi Otunya Falls, don't get it twisted, yeah? And we're going to look into seeing how we can restore the names of the area. People of importance, we need to name the islands after these people. There's different spots around this place that could even be dedicated to some of the liberation heroes who fought for Zambia to become Zambia instead of Northern Rhodesia. The Mukuni Craft Market is an opportunity for tourists and visitors to shop till they drop. We speak to one of the craftsmen who owns a stall in the market and find out how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected business. Okay, maybe you can just tell us a bit, how long have you been working here? What do you make? What is your speciality? I've been here for 20 years now. Okay. Yeah, I've been selling to local and foreign tourists. Which is your store? Let's take a look at what you make. Shop number seven. Okay. My name is Malu. Mr. Malu, Mr. shop Malu. number seven. Yeah. Check out these backpacks, guys. Laptop bag for your mini laptops. Right, come in. Earrings, ladies, bling bling, African bling. Braces, shades. Braces, shades. Braces. Oh, beautiful. I love the shorts. Mm. I love the shorts. Okay, Mr. Malu. This, this time around now we're giving local price because mm -hmm. of COVID. Yes. Most of the tourists are not coming in. So it's so we're now dealing with 90%, almost 95% percent Zambians. Zambian. Okay. So it's local price. So okay. everybody's able to get at least a piece. I know usually you depend on tourists and now they even shut down the falls for some time. Can you tell us how have the past few months been? The situation was just too bad because we closed for almost two months mm -hmm. and we're just home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not doing anything because we depend mostly on crafts. On crafts. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we couldn't sell the stuff. We just so for those two months, how were you surviving? Rent it was really food. hard. It was tough for us. I can imagine. So we tried. So we now we're only ones. depending on you people. The to locals come who and come, buy. at least they're able to get at least for 20 kwacha, 30 kwacha. It keeps yes. us going. So as you've heard it yourselves, um, things have been tough for people working here at the craft market. The market was closed for two months when the falls closed. But now it's reopened, but we need you as the Zambian community to come out, come and see the falls, come and buy the crafts, get yourself something here because this is not just about having fun and coming out to drink in Livingston. You're actually contributing to someone's family, their livelihood, and as we get a bit of money on our jobs, does it hurt us to come here and spend a bit of money on somebody else's business? I don't think so. They're saying fist bumps yeah. and foot bumps and <laughs> all the, I don't even know. Me, I just wave. Oh. When I'm greeting, I just say hello. Oh, oh elbow yeah. bump. Okay. All right, guys. So oh, here's your card. There's my card. Sure. Thank your you. Your name again? I'm Kasongo. Kasongo from? Uh, Livingston. I Livingston. stay in Highlands. Ah. Yeah, so this is in my backyard. That's why I have to promote this. Please, you have to do that. Okay. All right, guys. So you've seen the craft market. All right. Let's Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Hello. Greetings, greetings. How's work? Ah, Just one. trying. Pushing, pushing, eh? Yep. Okay, no, we're trying to market so more people can come. Right. Especially nice. Zambian, since the tourists is nothing at the moment. Okay, guys, as you can see, this is the craft market. 
I wish I could make things like this. If I had a piece of wood, I would turn it into just, I don't know. This is just amazing. Like, the culture of African people is as craftsmen and craftswomen. So we work with stone, we work with wood, and this is our economy. This is what we do. So I'm encouraging you guys, if you've never been to Zambia, you've never been to Africa, people, if you step into the motherland, don't think about just Cairo and the pyramids, Egypt. That's played out. Come to Zambia, come to the falls, and you'll see for yourself the beauty that is around here and you can go home with so much you can shop for your whole family okay guys your girl blackbird the bantu queen signing out with my new key rings thank you mr malu after another educational and awe-inspiring trip to the mossy otunya falls we make our way back to livingston while some of the people in the town of livingston may take the mossy otunya falls for granted we celebrate and honor this amazing heritage site that happens to lie just a few kilometers from our town. Discussion I put on the main agenda, move my board meetings out. My name is not a stranger. Love me, you can hate me, but I'm Dina can I pressure. At this cool prime, I didn't know go no time and dega. Do the gangs to leave, did you wait there at the green? Environmentalist, no team money grows on trees. See me thunder in the smoke. Now they calling me Victoria. Keep it like a secret, because it's mostly or to me out. Africa, black and I'm proud and I am sorry. My dear, I'm where it's hard correct. True story. H Town Hustler, Avenue's Queen, Cash Rules, everything. Around me, green. It was all a dream. Five star hotels, charter flights, sky life, came with TV. I ain't bragging or boasting, I'm just saying that most of my life is good. Who I go see you in the sky, ain't yeah, no lie. Black bread is on the rally, sky she come out and I give them ready for the ninja light. I'm a queen in this game, and that's how it's gonna be. Who do look up us and bow?